What's up, everybody? It's your favorite blindfolded psychopath, favorite nerd. Today, we are looking at the Play Arts Kai variant Harley Quinn designed by Tetsuya Nomura. As soon as I saw this figure revealed, I wanted to get my hands on it. But then when they put it up for pre-order, I was like, $250. I just can't justify it. So I need to give a special shout out to Kalem, who hit me up with a link that Play Arts Kai was having a massive deal going on, a discount deal on their website, like a big sale. And I was able to pick this chick up for a like 60 or 70 bucks, it was bananas. B-A-N-A-N-A-S. This is the third figure that Tetsuya has designed as far as my recollection. There was a Batman I wasn't interested in, the Catwoman, which I love, this, and then the Joker, which I also picked up, we'll be looking at later this week. But there's a fair amount to talk about here, so let's go ahead and get started. So she comes with this which is some sort of giant axe or something. And it also comes with this, which you can insert into the bottom and then she can wield it. This also becomes armor that we'll be taking a look at later on, but uh, it's a pretty impressive weapon, maybe a bit too, too, too intense, you know, where it starts to kind of definitely border on the ridiculous, but cool that it all works this way. We'll talk about the detailings later on, but it is massive just for a, a quick size comparison. I mean, it's about the size of her upper body. So it's it's definitely going to have a presence. She comes with these accessories, which all play a part that we'll look at later on. We're just going to talk about stylings now, and then we'll talk about how they attach and are used here in a bit. But she comes with this thing, which is has like a like a metallic gray and then a silver <clears throat> a uh, paint de deca uh, decals details to it. And then we have this, which has like a, met a gun metal silver and then a, a regular silver paint accents added. This has a fairly clean red, black, and white. Actually, the white may be the base, but the black is painted fairly clean, and so is the red. It's not 100%, but it's, you know, it's in the 90th percentile. And then this is just a silver uh, coating with some uh, airbrushing going on for shading around the base of it. And she comes with a firearm, which looks awesome. Two different shades of silver. One is just with the plastic was sculpted in, but it was a nice choice. And then the other is a paint accent. Looks good nonetheless. All the uh, kind of information there, the, the copyright stuff is all in the handle. So she's holding it. It's all covered up. No problem. She comes with one different face. Beautiful paint added to the eyes. All sorts of shading around into the eyes. The eyebrows are painted on. And then the mask is sculpted and painted. An array of hands. We get two different black armored ones, all detailed the same. We'll talk about that when we get there. One relaxed and one holding hand, or trigger finger hand. Then we have trigger finger hand and relaxed hand for the right armored hands, detailed the same that we'll talk about. And then we have one black holding hand for her regular suit, one red holding hand for her regular suit, one trigger finger hand for her regular suit, and one needle holding hand for a regular suit with the needle in there. And then that is all painted silver. Then she comes with the play art stand. It's not the greatest thing in the world, but it'll do the trick. And then she comes with this additional base that you can put her weapon in, which will help support it, which I do dig, because then you can really have it shown off. And I gotta really get her in. Oh, it's, uh, it's beveled, so it'll go like that. And then it sits perfectly. And then you can have her kind of holding it, and it won't take wear and tear on the figure joints, which is awesome. Very thoughtful. And then you have this piece, which we'll talk about in a bit. It does have a purpose, but I can't show it to you right this second. So let's talk about the figure. There's a lot of good here. There's a couple things that are a little questionable, but for the most part, I think it will display beautifully. But let's talk about why. And the why is positives. We'll start with that because we're going to start at the head. The head is wonderfully sculpted. Uh, very, you know, very play artsy, very stylized, but awesome. I love the little nurse's cap, the red and black with the smiley face are painted clean. There is a little red spot on there. I'm sure that's an individual results will vary. All play art stuff is hand painted. So there's, there's bound to be some error. And these are also on swivels, so you can adjust them a bit. I'm not sure how much it'll help you, but it is there. Earrings and the ears all sculpted and painted. The hair is, it seems to me, airbrushed. And then the bandages over the eyes, sculpted, painted, and airbrushed. The lips are painted, and I love the sculpt of the face. Like It has this like slight smile to it. Really, really works for me. As far as I can tell, and I could be wrong, and maybe we'll, it's a double ball peg from the head into the neck, and then a double ball peg from the neck into the chest. The only problem with this, and you should be able to fix this a bit by sliding this down, is... It does sit up fairly high from the collarbone. 
it's not a bother as long as you have this piece covering the joint because it kind of plays into the stylistic approach but proportionately it does seem like it sits at, like her neck is a little long and this is the general area where most of the weird things are so the next bit of business is this joint here so in the most recent years play arts has switched from making the shoulders plug directly into the into the chest you know uh parallel with the waist and kind of going down at this angle and I don't think it helps and I think it actually ends up hindering but it ends up giving a lot more exposure to the joint than some of their other releases from earlier in their in their endeavors that being said there is some subtle shading on the skin tones but the joints are very obvious the joints themselves as you can see is a disc hinge that plugs down into the chest getting the arm out to 90 degrees and then around you can swivel around the disc hinge which allows a bit of a butterfly joint kind of by accident almost i mean i'm sure it's by design do you know what i mean but the old school way that they used to have it the same way that fig wars does allowed a lot more movement in my opinion then so you have the swivel around the shoulder here and then you have a swivel at the bicep as well right here where this plugs in which is nice then you have the ruffles here which are all sculpted and painted you have the gloves which are sculpted and painted but they don't exactly match the elbow joint so they're shading on here and i think it's supposed to blend a bit better but the elbow ends up looking very different the elbow itself is on a disc hinge ratcheted to get you past 90 degrees so that's nice coming down to the rest of the hand the hand is also on a uh, disc hinge as opposed to just a ball hinge, which makes it a little bit more secure, which is nice. I like that a lot. And it'll swivel. So if you move it this way, take the hand over and use it as a lever to turn it up, then you can move it this way. And then the hand swivels on the peg where it plugs in. So you can get up, down, or in, out, depending on how you want it. Works perfectly, no issues. Then we have some highlighting airbrush wise on the glove, and that works as well. Same on this side, except you have a lot more skin tone. Um, and I have some smudges here. That's going to be an individual results will vary, but it's a little disappointing on mine. Same for the glove and the same for the reds in terms of matching. Now, for the chest, we have the white, which is shaded, and then we have the name card, which is very nice. Harleen Quinzel on there, and then little writing and such, a little picture of her before she went mad. Love it. No issues. I think this is a single ball peg for the waist which doesn't get you a lot of articulation for the diaphragm rather so you get a little bit down not really anything to note noteworthy a little bit back a little bit side to side but mainly just the swivel and that would be fine if we had another joint at the waist but i don't see one so i i just i think that's it i think that's all you're getting which is fine, I guess, but it's a little limiting. So then we have the corset, which is done beautifully. We have the red and the black. The red is shaded, the black is not. And then we have the straps that are painted on both sides, the gold buckles, which are all sculpted and painted, the lace, the um, lacing up the corset, which is all sculpted and painted and done fairly clean. You know, not 100% not perfect, like it's a little bit touch and go there in the back, but for the most part, it's done very clean. And then we have this floating belt piece which is maybe glued in. Yeah, it's glued in, it's pegged in back here. Uh, and then we have our like needles and syringes and stuff that are all sitting in this holster. That looks cool. The belt itself, all the stitching is painted. That's nice. We rarely see stuff like that and that looks great. And then the buckle is painted as well. And then we have this floating piece here and <clears throat> it's a softer plastic. It's like, I feel like it's like quasi translucent and it's shaded. So it's an interesting look and it does look cool. And then we have this design in here that's all painted and all the flaps are all painted. Underneath the sculpt and such continues up through. Oh man, I'll just peg that back in. But see, that looks like a joint. Oh, there it is. There's a second joint. It's just tight. So take back that criticism. That's nice. Okay, so there's another ball peg. Uh, coming from the hips into the abdomen and it's right there and then all of her kind of lingerie is all painted and then even looks translucent in places so that's cool all done very well a little touch and go there paint job wise around the the drawers which i'm not sure how i feel about but all right and then uh the back is the same and it is a uh, skimpy unit underneath there so then we have universal ratcheted universal joints for hips that's that's okay. We're going to talk about that in a bit. That's not a complaint of mine. Just bear with me. So we have, they get out fairly far. And then forward and back. And I not pop this piece out 
it should wrap around. So no issues there. And then we have a thigh swivel. And then we have a knee joint on a disc hinge. And it's ratcheted. All of this is sculpted, like the, the pants, and painted, and shaded. The paint isn't very clean. Like, it's, it's not the cleanest I've seen play arts do. Like, it's a little touch and go around the seams in a lot of places. But it is there. All that stuff looks great. And the red is all airbrushed shading-wise, which looks nice. Knee, like I said, ratchet hands get you past 90 degrees. And then you get an additional shin swivel if that's of interest to you. And then we have the boots, which are sculpted beautifully and painted okay. Little touch and go on this one, which is a bummer because it sits right in the front. You can kind of see how the black got way outside the lines there. But they are sculpted to the nine, so we have all the stitching running up the boots. We have the laces and the buckles that hold the laces all painted. We have the straps that are all painted and sculpted, and they're done beautifully with silvers and blacks and reds. No real issue. The red is a little sloppy on the lacing here. It's because you're taking red over black paint. I'm sure that was a pain in the balls, but they didn't do it very great. The back of the legs are a little bit weird in terms of sculpt because they're trying to allow the articulation. So it's a sacrifice that I'm willing to make and I'm okay with whether or not you are okay with it is up to you. I feel like that should have been painted. Maybe that's glue running down there. So there, there is a fair amount of QC issues with this. Um, so for the ankle, we have another ball, um, disc hinge rather. So you get an ankle tilt up and down. And if you move it to the side and then move it back around, you can get a rocker. Um, it's not the most elegant, but it'll work. And if you have it to a less extent, it'll work better. So it's definitely there. It's just not the most elegant. Uh, I, don't, I can't think of a better way to, to say it. Um, but that's kind of their way that they've always done ankle rocker, so I, it's what I expect. And then the boots are all sculpted to the nines, painted to the nines with blacks and reds and shading. So, yeah, fairly well done. A couple issues, but for the most part, pretty good. There she is from the back. So now we're going to deal with all this. So you'll need this, this, and your bar here. So you can remove the base here. Untab the head. Take off this piece, which would pretty much just fall off. Straighten the legs. Untab them, or unpeg them. Same on this side. Unpeg your wrists. I found that unpegging the, the wrist is where you want to start and then maneuver the shoulder out. My red one is a little bit more ornery one than the black. All right, and then you wanna take this piece and this piece and you want to combine them. You want the flat part facing up and then the rounded curves facing down and then this slides inside of there and you have this. Now, you can take this, peg that in on a ball peg there and then you can peg that into there and now you have this weapon, which is cool. We'll set that to the side. Now you wanna prepare her, take this leg apart, which is why we didn't get upset when it came off during the review. Take this one off, untab the shoulders and the head. I'm going to have to do this one off camera. All right, so what you're left with is this. You remove the name tag also. And from here, you take your chest piece, slide that over top. That'll fit around her chest. And then you take this piece, slide that over top, and peg that into the chest piece. And then at this point, you want to do the head. Now, you can have this head with just the black empty kind of shell there. Or I think what's kind of most striking is you take that piece out. You take this apart. You take this face piece and slide that into there so you can kind of have the one-eyed look. Take her other head, open that up, take this piece out, insert that into the back of this head, and then insert this face onto, and then you're kind of, you kind of have this look, which is, I think, a bit more interesting and you get a little bang for your buck with the eyes, if I can get it in, so to speak. I think that's cool. And then you put this on. All 
and I don't think I have it all the way on there, but we'll worry about it here in a second. And then you just need to attach everything else. I need to get a, um, let me get a visual reference real quick. All right, we can just use the legs. So we're gonna straighten these out and attach. Yeah, I told you. And then we'll, I'll get it. You know, actually, this is be cool because this will be the first time I have an action figure that I have to clean up before we take a look at it. And then we'll attach this one. And then the arms are going to be mix, mix matched. So the red will be over on this side. And then the black will be over on this side. And as you can see, this red connection isn't as uh, stable as the black. And we'll attach some hands. Get the point, put this back on. I'll get the head on and we'll clean it up. We'll take a look at it. And then this is kind of your, your end result, uh, which is a very mechish and, and ultimately not for me, but uh, an interesting approach to the figure and character and maybe arguably more in line with the kind of variant design, honestly. I get that. We'll go over the articulation real quick, see how it's helped or hindered. The head gets down to there. Engineering stays the same up to there, but the chest wants to pop up, but you can get it up to there with it staying in place. So I think that'll work. Tons of articulation there. I think the eye through the, the looking glass there, and you can kind of see it through this translucent red as well. Looks amazing. Black metallic, red metallic, and gray metallic for the face mask, and then a pearl lesson kind of... Uh, paint on the on the mask itself all looks beautiful and then we have the shoulders these are on dual ball pegs are on both sides so pretty much you just get the swivel out of it the paint looks great though it is a little dodgy in places but for the most part we have the black and red metallic and then we have some shading some airbrush shading on it and then here we have some highlights same sort of design black and red metallic Articulation wise, it's the exact same engineering. Uh, actually, that's not true, so let's go over it. So the shoulders are the same. No bicep swivel, you just get the swivel around the shoulder, and then you get a, um, a bicep swivel at the elbow, but it's not like a cut joint like we saw before. And then that gets you a little bit more than 90 degrees. The wrist is the same. Detailing is the red and black metallic, and then the red uh, has a airbrushing of a shade on it. We have some silver here as well, and then we have this blue kind of airbrush highlight that runs throughout which looks nice and this hand should be on a little bit more there we go and then the hips are all the same we did switch out this piece here um, for better or worse and then we have the legs which all move the same so there's no sense in talking about that we will talk about the ankle a bit you do get a double jointed knee though i want to point that out we got to put these heels out but it's a very tight joint and you it seems like it should go further but it's not there, that's where you want it. Um, ankle tilt up, ankle tilt down, and a rocker. So it's not as extreme as a rocker, and I'm not sure if you saw that up and down. But yeah, otherwise we have the red metallic with the airbrushing, we have the black metallic with the highlights, and we have this like kind of gray and silver accents there, and then the more flat red there. So pretty cool interesting take on the character i feel like you're spending a lot of money for these extra parts which i'm not sure like i almost wish they would have put out two figures for that kind of idea but whatever that's this is the way they chose to do it this is what we have and overall it works well final thoughts wise let's talk about the negatives first the connection on my right thigh leaves a little bit to be desired not a lot but a little bit it doesn't connect as securely as my other leg. The paint is very dodgy. On a shelf, I don't think it'll bother you. There's tons of it, but the quality control of it is not at its best, and I've definitely seen play arts do better. I just wanna take a look at this knee real quick. I like that kneecap. The shoulders pegging in at that angle don't work terribly on this figure, but I think a straight peg in with a cap around it would have worked better, gotten you more of a butterfly joint, wouldn't have looked as awkward, and would have covered down on the shoulder joint a lot better. Also on mine the front cover on her soft hip flaps has a tendency to come out once again that could be an individual results will vary sort of thing but plenty of good stuff as well the presence is amazing this figure makes you recognize it the accessories are awesome i love the hand with the syringe that she's rocking right there the big 
battle armor staff to me almost looks like a crazy balloon, you know? Like, so I think that's kind of cool. That's how I'm gonna have her set up. The sculpt is amazing. There is a ton of paint. Most of it is done well. There's just a fair amount of it that does get a little bit outside the lines. The articulation works across the board. So we need to talk recommendations, right? Here's the thing. At retail, this thing is $250. There's no way I can justify that price. I'm sure it's because of the accessories, but this doesn't feel like $100 more than what a regular Play Arts tends to go for. Now, sometimes this dude's designs run a little bit more pricey, but still, I feel like this should have been in the 125 to 150 pocket. I would have much rather spent that without the giant balloon thing, as cool as I think it looks. But if you can get this lady on sale, it is a cool figure, and it does make one hell of a display piece. So I can tell you at that 70 bucks or whatever I got her for, I am 100% satisfied. But I probably would have felt a little way about it had I got it for 250 Thanks for listening. Thanks for watching. Until next time, take care. Yeah.